Hi guys, so today I'm going to be talking about a few types of uh, airsoft guns that I know what I use. And while this video covers the airsoft guns that I personally know, there are many, many different types of airsoft guns out there. Some are already homemade, some are actually made by different airsoft companies, manufacturers, and uh, the world of airsoft is constantly evolving and changing. So just right now, it's what I currently know, and it does not... Uh, it's not a complete list of everything that's out there, so keep that in mind whenever you're watching this. First of all, what is airsoft gun? Well, first, whenever we talk about airsoft guns, we have to always go over safety. It's always important when you have an airsoft gun to make sure you're shooting in a safe direction, make sure you have proper eye for all, make sure you're using proper gun discipline, don't build an airsoft gun in public and whatnot. You don't want to uh, potentially have law enforcement come be called and whatnot because of a simple mistake. So use airsoft guns on a range or in a location where you are safe and others are safe and you know that you're using an airsoft gun. Uh, now, what do you do with airsoft guns? Well, of course, you can use them for target practicing, a little bit of fun airsoft, home airsofting in a safe place, uh, and also you can use them at actual airsoft field or airsoft locations, such as uh, events or at your local field, just for a, a fun weekend skirmish. Uh, now, what is airsoft? Airsoft is a fun sport played by uh, people of all ages, regardless of uh, race, gender, age, anything, you know, uh, going out there having a good old time uh, with other people. Airsoft is a sport where you are objectively trying to complete a task such as uh, eliminate all the other opposing players. And it can be, it can range from anything from capturing an objective, uh, securing a target, escorting people, uh, the sky's the limit when it comes to different game modes you can potentially create, play, and just have a good old time. There was a new one that was made not too long ago called uh, Trouble in Terrorist Town, where uh, a few people were selected to be the, the terrorists or the hidden uh, spies amongst everybody else. Uh, nobody knows who they are, they are randomly assigned, or the, uh, the, the referee or somebody who is watching the game assigns them, and the objective of the spies or terrorists are to eliminate all the other players while the other players are, are innocent and they are not the spies terrorists are supposed to find the spies eliminate them without eliminating other innocents and they have to potentially survive and it's just so many cool game modes and whatnot that you can come up with and create and just say you were playing football in terrorist town and you want to make a brand new rule well if, if you're with friends or you're with the event organizers and they allow it and they say it's cool Bam, the, the game evolves and so it's constantly changing throughout time and throughout throughout history. So uh, moving on from that, I want to talk about how these different airsoft guns work. So a uh, airsoft gun is a platform or replica molly after a real life firearm most of the time, although that's not always the case. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, they can be powered by a lot of different systems to take the six millimeter BB and project it or shoot it forward uh, towards your intended target. So uh, you can do it through a bunch of different systems, such as HPA or high pressurized air using a uh, external air tank. I'll be getting into these different things as we uh, progress throughout the PowerPoint. Uh, through a, a gas blowback rifle, through a automatic electric gun, uh, through spring power spring power rifles or, or spring power rifles, uh, rifles. So you have lots of different alternatives you can choose from. So if you, uh, if you see some people at your local field using a cool gun, you can go there and ask them how it's powered, what it's using, and they can give you tips and tricks on you know, what they did to make their guns work or, or what they prefer, honestly. So uh, these are just a few of these some different examples that I like to use and I have used in the past. Now let's uh, dig deep and dive deep into what these different types of airsoft replicas are and how they, they function. So first and foremost, we're talking about high pressurized air. Uh, high pressurized air, as you can see in the picture, it, this is a paintball gun, or it was a paintball gun until I converted it into an airsoft gun. So uh, let's go and explain how high pressurized air works. First and foremost, we have to have a uh, engine or HPA engine, which is a little cylinder, most of the time it can be a cylinder. It'll drop into your gun into a mech box or into a specific place into your gun which it has a nozzle, so the nozzle shoots forward, and it goes backwards to retract to let the BB load, or load the BB as you fire forward, 
depending on your different types of systems, such as a closed bolt and open bolt. So there are tons of different videos out there explaining what the difference is, but I'll go ahead and break it down real quickly. Closed bolt, the bolt's always closed, so to load the BB, you have to either rechamber the round, so you shoot, boom, it goes back, BB pops up, boom, reloads, ready to fire again, you fire, boom, BB fires out, goes back, new BB comes up, refires forward, all in one cycle. So this is very, very quickly. Open bolt, the bolt's always backwards, the BB is constantly being chambered when you're not ready to fire, so you already shot, boom, it flies out the barrel, it goes back to open, to open position, new BB is loaded, and you're ready to fire again. All this happens very, very quickly. Uh, honestly, I don't have a preference in what I prefer. I've used both. The picture that you see right here is a closed bolt system. This is called the Reaper, or the particular engine is called the Reaper. The Reaper. It's a Reaper Gen 1, so it's a really, really old system. They've got now Reaper Gen 2s out currently, which are really, really cool. But I like mine. Mine's been reliable ever since. I've, I've got it into a paintball gun, so obviously it can be used in a lot of different uh, uh, replicas. And this right here is not a, a real airsoft replica. This is a paintball gun that I myself converted over to airsoft. I did a lot of custom like drilling. As you can see, the top part is a... Uh, is drilled out from here to here, from, from here to here. Let's see if I can control. From here to here. Uh, I actually drilled that out. It was all one solid piece. I went through did a lot of custom work to make the uh, this is M4 trigger right here. I had to uh, custom dremel it out so it would fit in there. I took the actual Spartan uh, board. I put it in here with a little uh, set screw so that the trigger would engage it whenever it shot. And I ran the wires at the back, as you can as you can see, the wires at the back. So uh, HPA can run off a bunch of different systems or different uh, type of, of power sources. Uh, so it can use CO2, it can use any sort of gas you want it to use, but typically the common uh, power source is high pressurized air through a tank on your back or external air tank, or you could even, if you want to uh, buy the different types of grips or custom make them on yourself, you can use a uh, regulator on top on the bottom of your gun to hold a tank on the bottom of this. This right here was just for looks that I had. I still run the air out through the back. That's how I get the air for the system. Um, so you have your external uh, tank on your back, which is what I typically run. Tank on your back. It has a regulator because the tank puts out a PSI of 800 PSI. That's the first regulator. And you get a secondary regulator, such as a Wolverine Storm on tank regulator or a, a red line uh, regulator. There are even some Polar Star regulators. They reduce that pressure down to whatever one you set. So I typically run my 80 to 100 PSI. So it takes that, uh, that 800 PSI from the first regulator, the second regulator on top, which reduces it further more down to 80 PSI, out through a line for your back and into the join line to the gun right here. And that takes it right in the bottom of the cylinder. Bing, bang, boom, whenever you pull the trigger, it touches the motherboard right here calls it fire. Now your motherboard can be powered by different types of batteries. Uh, I use a little small, uh, like a little RC car battery. Uh, they typically have them at different uh, airsoft pro shops, but there are some HPA systems that uh, are not electromechanical, which is this right here is a electromechanical uh, system, electromagnetic system they use. But uh, those are fully mechanical HPA systems, like the uh, the Polar Star Kythera, which I've done some YouTube videos on and whatnot. Uh, that does not require a battery. That is just a simple, uh, it's a mechanically powered system. So your trigger will go through, activate a switch at the bottom of it, causing the uh, system to fire forward, fire back. Now the only issue is with this the current one that's been released, although they work, are working on a full auto version, the current system that's out is a semi-only system. So whenever you pull the trigger, one trigger pull equals one shot. Well, this right here, the system, because it has a battery and a motherboard, you can program different things, set your different dwell. Dwell is how much air is uh, uh, released on the barrel, how long this uh, the nozzle's open and whatnot. There are a lot more videos that explain that way better than I can explain it. Uh, also, it can set different fire rate modes. So, uh, if you have a motherboard, you have the option for full auto. You want burst, you, you need to do burst. Uh, if you want just semi all the way around, you can semi all the way around. It, you have lots of different options available to you with high pressurized air but also these are all upgrade parts upgrade uh, parts do cost money so uh, that is another factor to consider as well
and if you want more information about how I made this uh, paintball gun to an airsoft gun, uh, I have a whole different video out on YouTube that you're more than welcome to watch. Uh, the next topic we're talking about is gas blowback rifles or GBBR. This is a type of airsoft replica that whenever you shoot, the actual action itself will go backwards and reset itself and reload. Uh, this pistol is what I'm referring to. The slide will go backwards and then rechamber the round coming up the ground or the, the ground, the, the magazine into the, the system itself. As it slides forward, it moves forward. It will blow the BB, ready to fire again. Uh, now, typically, gas blow black rifles will have a internal or potentially external uh, reservoir, such as like in a, a Jag Arms uh, scatter gun or shotgun. Uh, they have uh, in the back of the gun, they have a reservoir for the gas that you put in there, such as propane, uh, duster gas, or green gas, you know, whichever one you want, whichever one they recommend. Uh, whenever you fill it up, it loads it from there and shoots. You never have to have a line or anything. Uh, the Tokyo Marui TM 5.1 High Kappa, which is the, uh, the picture of the pistol that I have on the screen. Typically, the magazine itself has an internal reservoir that held green gas or dust free gas. They actually recommend I think just using dust, uh, dust gas. I recommend using that, but I didn't like that. I wanted to use high pressurized air to get a little more FPS boost and also. I already have it on hand why would I pay for gas every time when I already have a tank and regulator it's free so I already got it so in order to do that you have to have a adapter at the bottom of it as you can see I'm outlining right here that adapter will uh, allow you to plug your your line up to your gun and no longer will you have to worry about refilling it with a different type of gas so gas pullback rifles as you said they are very similar to HPA but slightly different in their mechanics. And they also, a lot of people have heard, they uh, they like gas blowback rifles because of real, their realism. Realism. I've got a uh, Tipman uh, M4 uh, HPA uh, rifle. That's kind of like a hybrid between uh, HPA uh, electromagnetic systems and a gas blowback rifle. It actually has a bolt in the back of the gun, hammer and spring, where you fire it, goes <coughs> back forward. And reloads around every time and it uh, simulates like the real life uh action of a actual m4 or, or ar-15 whichever variant you or you, you use or have heard of uh, <laughs> so they have different types of pros now some cons of these that are removing moving parts so that there's a potential for uh you to break apart if you don't keep your gun or replica uh, well lubed up, well greased up, and make sure everything is well maintained. So uh, if you do your due diligence, you will have a perfectly working gun, but if you neglect it, you have the potential to run into issues. Same thing with electromagnetic systems. Uh, those require batteries, most of them. A lot of them require batteries, not all of them. And so if you get the motherboard wet, you have the potential to run into problems. If you uh, crimp or pinch a wire, you have the potential to short it out. There are potential problems in every one of these systems, and I want you to be aware of them. Uh, gas black rifles, they don't typically have batteries in the actual action of the gun. So you can theoretically use it even in the rain as long as you make sure and maintain your weapon afterwards or in, in, while you're in the rain. That's just best if you can keep your gun not exposed to the elements it'll probably last longer and have as many issues uh, or any as many foreseen issues as you know, as you're possibly going to experience i'm not gonna say you will experience some things i've had my pistol and i haven't uh, gone through and and glued the different parts where the moving parts in the guns are and the gun is and i haven't had any real issues and i've, I've been lucky but I need to go through and make sure I keep my, my replicas well cleaned and well organized. That's just proper maintenance. What about an AG or an automatic electric gun? Now, an AEG is an interesting kind of concept because it requires a battery to power a motor at the bottom of the gun, or typically at the bottom of the gun, it can be anywhere. Uh, typically, with M4s and AKs that are alike, the motor is found in the grip of the gun or the pistol grip. So, for, we're going to give you an example on the actual picture right here. So the battery is connected right here in this little green, I believe this is called a Tamiya connector. Line goes through here into the neck box, into the grip of the gun, 
so the battery uh, line goes up into here into the motor motor spins touches the gears gears wind and they help the gun fire so there's a cylinder inside the actual neck box that compresses air and sends air out the barrel so the uh, pretty much the space in here this is very similar to a spring powered uh, ripple which we're talking to talking about next it's just the batteries make the, uh, the motor do all the work for you so you don't have to sit there and re-rack the slide and re-rack the uh, cylinder to compress the air for you it just does it a lot quicker so the motor spins the gears the gears spin wind they take the piston and the cylinder goes back make uh, create space for air slams forward and it slams forward it shoots the air out the barrel of the gun and shoots the bb it's a very very simplified version of how this whole process takes place but uh it does that over and over and over again and the teeth of the pistons will uh, if, if you're not if you're not lucky because sometimes if you get a uh, cheap ak like, like mine uh, you will have the issue where the teeth of the piston will eat away at your uh, your cylinder and they may move gotta buy new parts and that's what i had the issue with. but then again i used a high powered battery in my ak that i knew would break it because i wanted to go ahead and upgrade it to hpa so uh Oh yeah, that's another cool part about HPA. HPA systems or, or cylinders can be put into most different guns. So you can put it into a, a AK, you can put it into an LMG, you can put it into a lot of different guns. As long as you're able to be handy you know, and, and do tech work. If you can go through and custom make stuff, you can make uh, HPA units fit into almost anything. I've seen them being put into little uh, into guns that the actual cylinder itself was bigger than the whole gun itself, like a, like a Mac 11. I've seen it put into a, a MP7. I saw one at the field not too long ago. The guy had it, he custom made it himself. It's like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. The sky is the limit when it, com the sky is the limit when it comes to custom work. So back to a, a math electric guns. So you get your power from the battery. The battery powers the motor, and that's how it fires the uh, BB. And it just goes through a constant cycle. The tighter the ratio of the gear, so like mine was something else. Like, 18 to 1, I think it was. Uh, gear ratio, I may be wrong, don't cite me on that. Uh, the, the smaller the ratio of the, the gear, faster it goes. So, like, uh, 18 to 1 is not going to be nearly as fast as, like, a uh, 16 to 1 or, or whatnot. Kind of different ratio. And upgrade parts help make these guns fire faster and also they help you know, more power as well. So, not just the gears, but the actual cylinder itself. If you can find upgraded cylinders, nozzles that will help you create better compression and therefore give you a better uh better firepower a better fps better fps boost and there's also a spring in the back of the cylinder which makes it slam forward so it's not just the gears throwing it forward it's a spring because the gears are pulling the spring back in the cylinder and slamming forward and so a uh, heavier spring like a m90 spring is not to be as strong as like an m120 spring so uh the higher the spring, typically the stronger the gears you need, the stronger the motor you need. So it, it, whenever you increase one, it's always good to increase all of it. But I mean, you know, ultimately, as long as you're having fun, does it matter how fast you're shooting? No. No. Because it's not the gun that makes the player. It's the player that makes the gun. I mean, I've seen players go out there with literally no gun at all, just using their hands for, like, tactical knife kills and they've had just as much fun and killed just as many people as a person who has a, a very very expensive gun because if you know how to play yourself and you know how to do your job you will be you will have fun you'll be great and you know at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you come home killing or eliminating a lot of different players as long as you're able to go home and smile now on to the spring-powered airsoft replicas. Spring-powered airsoft repl replicas are cool. There are quite a few of them that are effective, such as sniper rifles. Uh, my buddy Jared, he has a very, very nice sniper rifle that is spring-powered, and he does great with it. Uh, now, this right here is a picture of a little Walmart pistol. I don't even know the name of it. I got it years ago. I actually lost the magazine, and I had to do a whole modification to the very top of the gun right here, I don't know if you can see, drawing, awful. So the BB, I have to manually load it down into the little silver part and drop the BB inside as I'm racking the slide back and let it slide forward and shoot the gun from there. Uh, so as I said, spring powered, typically you have to use your own 
physical strength to rack the slide or rack the bolt or pull the actual spring itself backwards to compress the gun, the cylinder, and then pull the trigger to release it. So, I mean, you can make them however you want to make them. I've seen people go through and make slam fire rifles. So whenever you uh, kind of bolt, like a JG Barton, that's where I actually saw it at. Guy pulled the bolt back, release it, thump, and fired. So it, it sped up his time. So he had to make sure whenever he's ready to fire, thump, thump, versus already having it pre-cocked. But I mean, the sky's the limit when it comes to what kind of things you can make with, you know, you can make a, any sort of replica spring powered, or if, if you want to. Like I said, custom work is all up to the individual and their creative abilities. So spring powered, in my opinion, is not one of the most best or viable options when it comes to competitive airsoft. It's a fun option for like target shooting at the house or the home airsofting and just taking an airsoft for kicks and giggles. But I'd much rather have an AEG or HPA or a gas pullback rifle versus having a little one shot pistol, as you can see. No, sniper rifles, one shot, very much a great weapon, great replica. There are tons of uh, airsoft sniper videos on YouTube that you can have your pick for. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, my understanding of airsoft replicas and their different types of, uh, of, of power sources and how they function. Uh, it's just a, a general overview, nothing too, too deep and too, too specific. Like I said, you can go through and do your own due diligence and research how these all, how these guns work and, and how they function and what you might be interested in pursuing or, or buying uh, for your next airsoft excursion. So I hope y'all have a great day and I will see y'all later. Thanks for watching.